Hi, my name is Deborah Sinclair. I'm the editor-in-chief of Book of the Month Club. It's book week here in New York City, and today we are interviewing best-selling author Lisa C. Congratulations on your new book, Dreams of Joy. I understand it takes place during 1958 in China. I would imagine that finding out information, first-hand information about um, Mao's China would be very difficult. Can you talk a little bit about your research for the book? Yeah, well, I always go every place that I write about, of course. So I went to China, I went to Shanghai. Today I went to all the locations that I've written about. Mm -hmm. I also spent a lot of time in a small village in Anhui province called Huangsan. And um, I had been invited to stay in a 17th century villa in this little town. Let me just say that a 17th century villa in a small chi Chinese village is a lot different than a 17th century villa in Tuscany. I uh, <laughs> no hot water, oh, no, no windows, things like that, but it was fabulous. So the villa that is in uh, Dreams of Joy is based on okay. that particular villa. Okay. So, Part of my research really is about going to the places, about mm -hmm. eating everything that's in the book I've eaten, but then also talking to people who lived through that time. Which sister do you identify with the most, Pearl or May? Well, on any given day. <laughs> but I do think Pearl, she's a mother, I'm a mother. Yes. And I think that that especially, that deep, deep mm. sense of motherhood and what you will do for, for your, your child, child. Yes. Um, you know, that sense of sacrifice of um, what happens when you have an argument, mm. what happens when you know your child is making the wrong decision mm. and there's really nothing you can do and how a mother would feel about that. So definitely I connect to Pearl, mm -hmm. but in fact I'm a sheep like <laughs> May, and so there are aspects of May's personality that definitely come from me as well. Do you think we'll ever hear all of May's story? I hope so one day because uh, you know, you never really hear what she thinks, although in this novel much more so because she has, she's writing letters. Mm -hmm. And so you hear her in an unadulterated manner. You know, before, it's always through Pearl's eyes. Yes. And always just interpreting mm -hmm. what her sister thinks. But yes. now I'm getting closer. Every time it's a little oh. step closer. This time letters, next time who knows. Let's move on to Snowflower and The Secret Fan. Um, this is your first novel to be made into a movie. Yes. Any surprises? Have you seen it yet? I've seen it. Oh, great. I was so scared to watch <laughs> it. And actually, when Fox, the studio, mm -hmm. called and said, do you want to come see it? I said, sure. And then I called him back and said, can my husband come? <laughs> Sure. <laughs> Can my kids come? <laughs> sure. So we had the five of us went, and my sons were sitting in front of us. And as the foot binding scene was approaching, mm. they were shrinking down lower and lower mm. in their seats like this. But it wasn't so bad. Okay. It really okay. wasn't so bad. And they kind of popped back up. Oh, phew. They survived it. The story that I wrote, the part of the movie that's based on Snowflower and the Secret Fan, is absolutely true to the novel. Oh, that's great It's to hear. as though they just took pages of the book and that's pasted them up there on the screen. Oh, that's great. That sounds like the movie's going to be a lot of fun to go yeah. see. Were any of your books easier to write than any of the others? or You know, they're all hard, mm -hmm. actually. Uh, with Snowflower and the Secret Fan, that book I had thought no one was going to read, and people kept saying to me, oh, no one's going to read that book. <laughs> and in a way, that really freed me to write the book that I wanted to write mm -hmm. without thinking about an audience, without thinking about anyone else. And then it turned into this huge, wonderful, international mm -hmm. success. I think for a lot of writers that would cause them to kind of, you know, either rest on your laurels yes. or not write anything right. or... Or try too hard. Try too hard. Yeah. But what happened for me was that I heard from so many readers that they had connected so deeply to Snowflower and Lily's story. They actually encouraged me to go deeper, yep. to do what the Chinese women writers called cut to the bone, mm -hmm. to try to cut to the bone to get to the truth of human emotions and relationships. But in a way, each book gets harder and harder, and harder and harder emotionally. Emotionally, sure. Uh, and so with Dreams of Joy, there are parts of this book that just killed me mm -hmm. and it was very hard to wake up in the morning and say oh I'm going to that that place mm -hmm. and you do write every day yes I yeah. do thank you so much Lisa it was a pleasure to interview you happy reading everyone at Book of the Month Club hi I'm Lisa C I'm the author of Dreams of Joy and Snowflower and the Secret Fan you can find both books at Book of the Month Club <laughs>